The last of our teenagers is Diane, and I first met her, as I did Pat and Mike, at a debate at the Warwick Institute in Pimlico, conducted by the principal, Mr. Jordan. Now, do you think that money is essential to happiness? Uh, let's see what you think about this. I think that when you get married, you make an agreement to have a good time first and save up at the same time. And then the time comes to have children. And then when you have the children, you know that you should, look in, you should stay in and look after them yourself. I, I don't think that my children, I'd like my children to be brought up by anybody else. The point is, money's not everything. The, the things you really want in life is a good home with a good wife. You don't really need money all the time. If you've got love and say you've got no money, well, you've always got that love to look by. Yeah, well, you're getting married the first few weeks for enough, but you keep talking about it from the point of love, but love only lasts a few months. I know all you say, oh, we you find the right bloke, it lasts forever, but it just don't last forever. And you've got to have enough money to go around. You can't say that, you've not had the experience. Well, nor have you. You don't know everybody in this world. Lots of people stay enough for ages. You can't talk like that. Diane, 15 and a half, a schoolgirl. She lives in West Norwood. Morning. That's Dirk Bogart. He's my favourite film star. Well, some people think it's silly keeping photographs like that. But myself, yeah, I don't think it's silly at all. Diane, breakfast. Downstairs, her father is already at the table. We moved into this house three months ago from central London to try and find a, a new environment for our daughter to make new friends and acquaintances. Mind you, she's not very really happy with the situation at the moment, but we're hoping it'll improve. She thinks that the people in this district are either too old or too young, but mind you, I don't think she's given them a chance. I've found some very nice young people around here and I hope she'll find them too. I think she's quite an average teenage girl at school, quite successful in most of her lessons and has a good report every year. All the same, Diane doesn't enjoy school much. Well, I mean, school, it gets boring. It's OK if you've got friends, but most of mine have left now. Well, the teachers there, they just treat you like young children. And you have to wear out-of-shape uniforms, ordinary hairstyles, and no makeup. And if you meet anybody on the way home, you just get laughed at, and you never live it down. School over, the first thing Diane does is to change out of school uniform and put on a frock and a bit of makeup. And now the rest of the day is hers. Or perhaps a cycle round the neighbourhood. Oh, it's nice, but I've got no friends. I mean, it's very deserted around here for younger people. And they're either very young or very old. Diane likes the outdoor life, but finds time to read detective stories and newspapers. Religion she's not much interested in. We do read the Bible at school, but some of it is very hard to believe. Some of it just seems impossible. Diane has plenty of energy. And in the evening, maybe, she'll go dancing. Or, like tonight, have a party at her house. But first, she buys a few records. In the dining room, Diane's mother was busy with refreshments. I, I remember when I was young, I had very strict parents. I was allowed to do so very little, and that's why I think I like to see the children enjoying themselves so much. You see, I was never, for instance, allowed to use makeup, and it was always so very important to me then that when Diane got to early teenage, I suddenly remember my own youth and how strict my parents were and how I used to come in late at night and rub off my makeup rather than let my mother see it, which was entirely wrong. And so I bought her a compact and a, a lipstick of her own so that she could use them openly. And I've always felt the same about boyfriends. Probably I don't like some of the boyfriends she brings home, but what can I do about it? Let her bring them home, let her compare them with her own people, and then she'll meet, eventually, the type of man that I'd like her to marry. <laughs>
Sometimes, and not often, Diane finds herself alone. A once no boyfriend. Oh well, says Diane, they come and go. It's as though Diane and life were conducting an experiment together, accepting, rejecting, analyzing. Already she has firm ideas about marriage. And what sort of man would she like to marry? Well, I'd like him to be well built and about three years older than myself. I'd like to know where he was going if he was going out, but I wouldn't ask him. I'd like him to tell on me. And I want a man who likes children because more than anything, I want children. I don't want to marry a man with lots of money because I think money starts trouble. I just want a little home and to be happy. Tirelessly, life and Diane continue their experiment, sometimes on familiar ground. Sometimes Diane visits a place she's never been to before, the Humphrey Littleton Jazz Club. Tired out. But life doesn't tire. He spins his wheel and the generations come and go. Each apparently so different. Each essentially so alike. And the experiment goes on. 